At least 43 people have died in a wildfire there. Derek Van Dam joining us with more about it. Yeah, and unfortunately, George and Natalie, the death toll continues to rise in this tragedy in central Portugal. This is about 200 kilometers just outside of Lisbon, where uh, victims who were trying to flee from this wildfire uh, were caught as the fire actually surrounded them. And uh, we're starting to learn more information about this, but the officials there, Portuguese officials, are calling this the greatest wildfire, wildfire tragedy in recent history. Take a look at some of the footage and you'll see exactly why and what people had to contend with. This is a fire that spread very, very fast in a very small town, again, about 200 kilometers just north of Lisbon. On Saturday, some nearby villages are still completely surrounded by this blaze. The government says it doesn't have enough firefighters to combat the sheer size of this fire. Portugal's National Authority for Public Safety issued wildfire alerts due to high temperatures, low humidity, and strong winds that continue to fuel the flames. Check out this nighttime photo behind me of the flames that were burning uh, still early this morning. Uh, scary, scary moments to say the least. More than 20 people have reportedly been killed and several others hurt by a devastating forest fire in central Portugal. According to initial reports, most of the victims were trapped in their cars and burned alive or suffocated. At least two people are missing. Portugal's Prime Minister, Antonio Costa, was quickly at the scene as the scale of the drama became clear. He confirmed it's the worst tragedy in terms of lives lost in the last few decades. The blaze broke out in the mountainous Pedro Gao Grande region on Saturday amid an intense heat wave and grew in intensity fanned by strong winds. Several months of drought have left dense woodland tinder dry, the perfect condition for flames to spread. Around 400 firefighters are battling to control the flyer. It's understood French and Spanish authorities will add their water bombing aircraft to help put out the blaze, the cause of which remains unknown. Um desses feridos, um civil, uma criança ou um jovem, não temos a idade hum, concreta dessa vítima, hum, nem em que circunstâncias ficou ferido. Sendo certo que é um ferido grave, não só hum, pelas hum, condições em que foi hum, sendo assistido junto ao helicóptero pelos técnicos e pelos médicos do INAM que estavam presentes e uh, essa assistência, uh, essa tentativa de estabilizar esse ferido demorou uh, seguramente uns 45 minutos antes do helicóptero levantar o voo e transportar então essa vítima, provavelmente, e não o confirmamos ainda, para os hospitais da Universidade de Coimbra. Para além desse ferido, dessa criança, desse jovem, tínhamos também a indicação de pelo menos mais dois civis, mas nos últimos minutos conseguimos perceber que poderá haver mais civis, para além desse número de três, que inicialmente avançámos por volta das oito e meia e às nove da noite. Sendo certo também que há feridos entre os bombeiros, não sabemos ainda a extensão desses ferimentos, nem quantos bombeiros terão feridos e isso é algo algo que só poderemos apurar então quando ou o comandante operacional que está aqui reunido com os vários elementos que participam no comando deste teatro de operações ou então quando o secretário de Estado da Administração Interna aqui chegar. Sendo certo é que o cenário parece mais grave do que há uma hora atrás.
So when we talk about the desert southwest, it would imply by the name desert southwest that it uh, does tend to get a little bit on the warm side in that part of the country from time to time. This is actually the hottest part of the year, usually uh, talking averages. Um, on average, it's usually about late June when things get the hottest. And I'll tell you what, this year you are going to feel it because we have some serious, serious heat coming up over the next couple of days. It takes a lot for the Weather Service to put out excessive heat warnings in this part of the country, especially this time of year. And um, yeah, it's going to get just dangerously hot in a couple of these spots over the next few days. So let's talk about what the temperatures are going to be like. Yeah, we've seen temperatures like this before in the southwest. Temps around 110 or more than that, especially places like Vegas and Phoenix. Yeah, it's a little bit on the warm side, but the thing is, once we get to uh, the early part of the week, especially Tuesday, look at these temperatures, how much they rise. Phoenix, 120 degrees. Vegas, about 116. Actually, Tuesday, Phoenix, is going to get pretty close to its all-time record high, which is 122. Vegas's all-time record hottest is 117. We're going to give that a run for its money on Tuesday or Wednesday. So what do you do in heat like this? Listen, it's a lot of common sense. Try to not be outside very much. Uh, drink a lot of water if you're doing uh, physical activity. And just check on your neighbors, especially if they're a little bit on the older side. Summer doesn't officially start until Wednesday, but for parts of the West and the Southwest, they're already broiling in triple digit heat waves. 119 degrees in Furnace Creek, California, 113 in Blue Water, Arizona, and 112 in Midland, Texas. It's making conditions even more dangerous for crews battling wildfires. Here's Danielle Nottingham. Rena, temperatures in parts of California are expected to rise as high as 25 degrees above normal. Sizzling heat across the region could break records. And another cause for concern, air quality. Unhealthy to very unhealthy levels of heat-induced ozone pollution are expected in several inland communities. Excessive heat warnings extend to Nevada, parts of Utah, and in Arizona, where over a dozen wildfires are burning around the state. Six firefighters had to be treated for heat-related illness while battling the High Line fire in Payson. Temperatures in Phoenix are expected to reach 120 degrees. And the hottest temperatures will arrive in the southwest on Monday and last through the end of next week. And in the Southern California desert, highs in Death Valley could soar to 127 degrees. Rena? Danielle Nottingham. Thank you, Danielle. Breaking news, the fire burning in Castaic is growing with no containment in sight. Hundreds of acres of land now scorched. That fire is burning near the 5 Freeway and Ridge Route Road. It's also burning in some really rugged terrain. KCLN's Jeff Nguyen is live in Castaic with the latest. Jeff. Guys, off the top, we should tell you about a thousand acres have burned so far. I'm going to step aside so that Angie Morricone can show you where this fire started. As you can see right now, there are literally dozens of hot spots right there. We are panning our camera to the west where you can see much more intense flames lighting up the night sky as well as reflecting off the lake. Now, in order for this fire to go from point A to what you are seeing right now, it had to jump over the water, and that is why crews are expected to work through the night. This is going to grow. This is cell phone video from the Darwa family during their boat ride on Castaic Lake soon after flames erupted near the southern shores. You can see fire department boats trying to douse the fire that raced through a grove of trees. Which one of you pointed out the smoke first? The Stoddard family had to cut its day on the lake shore because dad is a contract firefighter who always has his radio nearby. Uh, we just kind of went from a day at the lake to a day watching fire, waiting to see if he's going to have to throw on his turnouts and go help. Throughout the day, a team of five planes and five helicopters relentlessly dropped water and retardant on the fire. The fire started Saturday afternoon on L.A. County land and quickly moved into the Angeles National Forest. It hopscotched over lagoons and formed several towers of flames at a time. Now, if you can tell, it's over. You know, what is that? It started here, one, two, three, four canyons, and it's all the way up there. The Sheriff's Department didn't allow anyone to come into the park. However, people already inside could stay. Paul Ratliff and his friends say this is their favorite swimming spot. They decided to go into the water on the north side of the lake, which is significantly far from the flames. Oh, it's always a bummer that, uh, but it's just part of life that, you know, here in Southern California, we, we have to deal with. 
The Darwa family left the lake after capturing this video, while the Stodders packed up for another reason, just in case Dad had to go suit up for work. It gets a little scary sometimes, but it's okay. He's good at what he does. And at this point, containment is only at 10%. The fire department tells us that this fire is burning in some back country, so no homes are threatened right now. Now, coming up on our sister station, CBS2, at 11 o'clock, we will show you more of that cell phone video to give you a better sense of how massive those flames were. For now, we will send it back to you. All right, looks like a scary situation nonetheless. Jeff, thank you. ¿Dónde llega ahora hasta el...? Ya, a ver, tranquilo, papá. Tranquilo, es igual, no, ¿no? Me voy a jugar un poco. No para ni el agua siquiera. Están secando aquí un poco. ¿Cómo se mete el sector? Sector del dos. Mate, está, 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 está